Hi everyone, and welcome to another Idea Lab demo. Today we will be demoing how to make um, 3D printed uh, infill jewelry. So in this case, a uh, a little earring. We'll see if we can get the uh, the camera to focus. Um, there we go. What we've got here is uh, just a simple shape with kind of a really cool pattern in it and then a hole here at the bottom that we're able to put a hook through um, or it could be a pendant for a necklace or anything um, but this is a great project because we're going to take a simple shape do a little bit of 3D modeling to get it the size we want and add this hole and then bring it into our 3D printing program to choose our pattern um, on the inside uh, to choose something that you know you think you think looks cool and is a cool pattern um, because infill is simply the name for uh, what goes inside of 3D prints to hold them up uh, and make them strong and give them a little bit of structural integrity um, but we can also use this as a design element in jewelry or in lots of other things um, so we'll touch on 3d modeling we'll touch on adjusting print settings so let's go ahead and get started so to start making our 3d model we will need to pick a shape uh, that we want our earring to be um, so to do that we are going to go to a website called tinkercad.com and this is a website where you can make a free account for doing basic 3D modeling. Um, so if you don't have an account yet, you can hit join now um, and say create a personal account. And all you need um, is an email address and to give your date of birth. Um, if you are um, a kid, you'll need a parent uh, to sign on in you. Um, but in this case, we already have an account. So I will go ahead and log in. And then once you are logged in, your home screen will look something like this, and you can go ahead and click on Create New Design. And then in Tinkercad, we see this imaginary plane where we're going to put our objects. And on the right here, we have a bunch of different, op uh, different options for objects and shapes that we can choose. And we can also click on this menu to see that we can also do text and numbers, characters, um, a lot more things than just basic shapes. Um, but we'll stick with basic shapes. And for our earring, the our first requirement is that the object is flat on the top and flat on the bottom um, because we want something that will print flat on the plate as well as something that when we peel away or have the printer not print the very top and bottom layer we can see the infill so a box would work a cylinder would work um, a sphere wouldn't because it's rounded but a scribble could work um, a, a polygon uh, a heart a star um, any of those any of those could work because they're all flat on the top, flat on the bottom. Um, we could also just as easily do um, a letter because letters are flat on the top and flat on the bottom. Um, so uh, a couple couple different options there. Um, and if we click on say the box, you'll see that when I click on it, it gives me a few different options and I'm going to zoom in on it by using the scroll wheel. Um, I can change the radius, which makes it rounder or flatter. We want to keep it flat. Um, I can change the steps. Um, I, that one, in this case, doesn't matter for a box. I can change the length. I can change the width um, using these using these sliders. Um, I can also change the height with these sliders. Um, important to know that not every shape gives you all those options. So for our cylinder, it gives us the number of sides for how round we want it to be, um, how much of a bevel it has, but again, we want it flat. And if I click on something like the heart, I don't have any of those options at all. Um, so know that depending on what um, object you pick, you might have some different, uh, different choices for how you can customize it. Um, quick navigation, I can change my view either by clicking on this little box and kind of changing what I'm looking at, whether I'm looking right from the top. I can also right click on the mouse and kind of drag around to view. I can scroll in and scroll out with the mouse um, and I can hold down shift on the keyboard and then right click with the mouse and then kind of pan to change my view. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, and get rid of some of these because I will make our earring today with the star. 
Um, so when we click on the star, you can click on it and hold down and, and move it around um, just to make it easier to see. Um, and the first thing we're going to want to change is the height. Um, so Tinkercad is in millimeters, um, and uh, we figured out that a good height for an earring is about three or maybe four millimeters. You don't want it too thick, otherwise you can't get um, an earring ring through it, um, and you don't want it too thin either so that it breaks. Uh, so to change the height, we can do two things. This um, white box in the middle, um, or the one kind of at the top of the object, represents the height. We could hold on to it and drag it up or down and drag it to three. Um, we could also, after having clicked on it, you can click in the box and you can just type three. So that's the most important thing we want to change. Um, and then the rest of the size, we see that it's 38 millimeter, 38 millimeters by 36 millimeters. Um, and we could change that too and maybe make it a little bigger. Um, something in the 40s is probably good. Anything bigger than that might be, uh, might be too big of an earring, but also up to you how big or small you want your earring to be. Um, so we'll leave it like that. So now we've got our shape. We've got it the right height, so that's good. So the only thing we, um, or the main thing we need to add in, in Tinkercad as far as this design portion is we need to put a hole in the earring so that we uh, have something to fit you know our actual little ring that'll attach it uh, to our ear to um, so we need to make that hole and the way that we can do that is if we go back to basic shapes um, you see there's a regular box and a regular cylinder but then there's also kind of this striped box and a striped cylinder if I click the striped cylinder this represents a hole um, so we're going to use this to punch out a hole in our star. But as we can see, this is way too big. We just need a tiny hole, and this is, uh, this is very big. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it, drag it in so it's a lot smaller. And I'll even type to say make it 3x3. Three three. And that looks good. And then you can click and drag it to move it around. Um, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it in any direction. If you can't get it in quite the spot you want it to, Snap Grid um, down here is the setting for how much it's moving in any direction when you hit the mouse or when you drag it. So you could change Snap Grid to be a much smaller amount, and now it's moving um, by a lot less, and we can try and get it um, you know, in exactly, exactly the spot we want. If we wanted to get really fancy, we could select both objects and say, uh, and click on Align, and I could see if I could use one of the align tools to try to get it lined up exactly where I want it. In this case, since we're trying to put um, a hole kind of in the top of a star, it's not necessarily the, the pure center of the star, so not too much help here, um, but can, can sometimes be helpful for other objects. In this case, it's probably just easiest to eyeball it. Um, so that looks, that looks close enough. So I'll go ahead and select both objects, which I can do by clicking and dragging a box so it covers both. You can also click on one item, hold down shift and click the other, um, but just clicking and dragging works. And then we'll go ahead and click the group button. And when I click the group button, it fuses that hole with our star. And now you can see um, that we can see through and it's there. Um, and maybe it's not perfectly centered, um, but it's definitely uh, close enough. Um, so that's good. Uh, but we don't just want one earring, we want two. You could make your earrings out of different shapes. Um, in this case, I'll just make, uh, I'll just make two stars, um, but feel free to mix and match as you want. Um, so to copy it, I can click this button here that says duplicate, and now I have a second one. So I've got my two earrings made. Now we are done with our design portion. Uh, we have designed our earring. We need to export this 3D model. Uh, so we can pull it into the 3D printing program and actually print it. So to do that, we'll go ahead and click Export, and we'll say everything in the design because we have two shapes, and then we want it to be an STL model for 3D printing. So we'll click STL, and it exported. Um, I think it, oh, and there we go, uh, exported to uh, Downloads. So now let's go ahead and pull up Cura. Um, so Cure is a free program. We have links to download it on our website. Um, it is the program for taking a 3D model and getting it ready to print. Um, if it's your first time using the program, um, you may need to add a printer. And the printers we have here at the Idea Lab are Ultimaker S3s or Ultimaker 3s. So you'll doing this from home, you'll say add a non-networked printer. Click either of those. Doesn't matter which. I'll do Ultimaker S3. Um, for now, and, and you'd click Add, and then you'd be 
getting all your settings ready for the printers that we have instead of getting your settings ready for a different printer um, that we don't have. But in this case, um, I'm in the ideal app, so I'm connected to the printers that we do have, so everything is okay. So let me bring in our earring model. And there it is. So we'll click open. And there are our two little earrings. Um, I don't need to change their size. They're the, the size we already wanted. Um, for settings, I'm going to head and click uh, profiles up to point two. If you want to learn more about these settings and more about 3D printing in general, uh, I encourage you to take a look at our 3D print class. But for today, we'll kind of just cruise through them. We don't need adhesion. We don't need support. Um, and info we're going to play with a little more. Um, but to print those cool earrings uh, that we saw, right now we see that the tops and bottoms are just flat, but we want to see that cool infill pattern inside. Um, so this is a custom setting. So we're going to go ahead and click custom. And the first thing we need to do is shell. Um, and we are going to say that top layers are zero because we don't want any layers covering the top. We want to see inside and bottom layers should also be zero. So make those two changes. Um, and right now you think, well, we changed top and bottom layers to zero, but they still look the same. If you want to see what the print is actually going to look like, we'll click on preview and then this will show us. So this is how our model would print. So that looks, that looks pretty cool, um, but maybe we want a different pattern. So to change the pattern, we go to infill and um, infill pattern is right now on triangles, but there are a bunch of different patterns we could choose. There's octet, and we can see what that looks like. There is cross, and you can see what that looks like. And then the other thing you can change is the density. So how dense do we want this pattern to be? 20 looks pretty nice. There's lots of space, but you could also say um, you know, that you want it a lot denser. Bump it up to 50, and now we've got kind of a real intricate pattern. If you try to do too much, uh, so if you go really, really high, it might not print. Um, exactly exactly how it looks should be pretty close but we wouldn't want to go say maybe all the way up to up to 90 that's so small that it's likely that that would all kind of fuse together and look flat while printing um, so you know 50 50 I think is a good starting point but you could go down to 20 you could go up to 80 all depends on the pattern you choose um, and what you want it to look like um, so those are the two settings change top layers and bottom layers to get rid of them so we can see our cool earring um, we clicked on infill to change our uh, pattern and our density and then uh, there's one more that we need to one more setting we need to change and it is under travel and at first we don't see it so I'm going to go ahead and click on this gear and under travel we need to select combing mode that we want to um, add that is something we can change and click close and combing mode we just want to turn off it doesn't change our preview at all um, but when combing mode is on it means that the print head will kind of cut across this shape to to move in the fastest way and leave little lines of plastic filament that kind of ruin our design so we want to click on that gear to enable us to change combing mode and turn combing mode off so that the only thing that prints is the pretty design that we want um, so with all of that done we we have our design saved it'll take 27 minutes to print and be three grams that's not that much at all um, so now we want to save and submit it to the library um, so we'll go ahead and click save project and it'll say these this is kind of the settings you had we'll say save again and now we can name it whatever we want um, and I'll save it in the downloads folder and I'll say star earrings and we'll click save and now we have that project saved, and now we can go to the library's website to submit that 3D print. To go to the library's website and submit that print, we'll go to erielibrary.org, and then we can click on Idea Lab, and then we can click on click here to submit a 3D print. And this says you must register for an Idea Lab sticker and take our Learn to 3D Print class before submitting. Um, that is true, so you can click here. To register for an ID Lab sticker um, and do that online or do it in person and then you can click here to take our learn to 3d print class in the case of this star earring project if this is the first thing you've ever printed we definitely encourage you to take a look at the 3d print class um, but if you want to just send in the star print first because um, this is your first ever you know 3d printing experience and you 
are using it to decide if you want to get more into it, feel free to just go ahead and submit it. Um, and it's okay if you haven't taken the class. Um, this is a, a great first project, so you see what 3D design and, and 3D printing is all about. And then if you want to, you can go back. But we definitely encourage you to take it. You'll, you'll learn a lot more about how the printers work and the things you could do. Um, but then we'll just go ahead to click here to submit a 3D print. And... I won't type out uh, all of my information for our start print, but you would put your name and your library card number, um, and the most important thing would be to attach your file. So attach star earrings and say upload. So make sure it's there. And now it's uploaded. Put in the estimated print time, and ours was 27 minutes. And then kind of the second most important thing as far as attaching your file is saying what color do you want your earrings to be. So we've got uh, a whole bunch of really good colors. Um, I will go ahead and say just print mine in plain blue. And then with the rest of it filled out, you could hit submit. And then ID Lab staff will be ready to print it. Okay, so now that our earring is printed, we need to assemble it so that it comes out looking something like this. So earring, uh, the earring we printed on a jump ring, and then an earring hook, so it's got somewhere to go. And something I noticed looking at this example is this one is a lot thinner than our nice thick star, so you may actually want to print um, a, little, a little thinner than the, the three millimeters we did. Um, but so we'll use two uh, small sets of pliers, which we have in the ID Lab, and we also have available to check out as part of our jewelry making kit. And you'll take your jump ring and bend it apart so you've got uh, a bit of an opening. And we'll try and slide our, our earring over and we'll pull it apart a little more if need be but there we go looks like we got it and then we'll add on the earring hook and now that we've got everything on the loop we want to use our one of our sets of pliers to close the loop so that nothing falls off so we'll see if I can get that All right, so they're pressed together, and maybe they could be also twisted a little bit together, so they just have a, a bit of a tighter seal there. Oh, and there we go. That, I think, is as close as, as, close as I'll get. So there is our completed earring, ready to wear. Uh, so go ahead and enjoy, and we're excited to see uh, what kind of earrings you make.